So I released a video on my channel about this radio, the Quan Sheng UV K5, and I've had a few questions from you, the viewers, about this particular radio. So I thought in this video, I would answer those questions for you and give you a little bit of a secret hint about how to unlock this radio for wideband transmit. Okay, so the first question comes from JP and he says, does it allow you to choose AM on any frequency? So that's a very good question. Um, I am here now on UHF. So let's just go to menu and we'll go through to AM. And it allows me to, but as you can see, that's not AM. AM I think is restricted to the airband. Because as soon as you come in here, it shows AM on the um, on the display. In fact, it looks like the actual frequency range is 108 to 135 megahertz. The next question is, is can you elaborate on what type of antenna connector is on the radio? Is it a reverse polarity connector, SMA, like all the others? Well, I can reveal that yes, it is indeed a reverse polarity SMA connector, which is common on these uh, Chinese radios. So I mentioned in my previous video that you want to probably get rid of this antenna because it's not really that good. I have here a, um, this is labeled as an Abri AR771. You can also get these as a Nagoya 771. I'll put a link in the description below. This antenna is a little bit longer and it is slightly better than the stock antenna. And that just screws straight onto the radio and uh, it's a little bit flexible too. So you can knock it against things and you won't damage the antenna too much. So. That is a definite upgrade for this radio, but yep, it is an SMA reverse connector. Someone mentioned that they went looking for this radio on Amazon and they couldn't find it. Quan Chang is this particular uh, stamp on the top. It is also made by these other manufacturers and I'll put them a list of them right here on the left. So if you're searching for this, have a look for those. There is also a couple of different model numbers that this is known by. Alan asks, have you tested the radio's sensitivity on the airband? No, we can test the radio sensitivity on the airband or we could just do a very simple test. Let's dial up my tower frequency and we can have a listen. Someone mentioned that the quality of receive on AM is pretty poor. Now I am downstairs here. Um, I'm probably about five miles away from the tower. It's slightly blocked. I'm just gonna use here the standard antenna and let's see if we can hear what the tower or AM aircraft sounds like. So there's a couple of examples of what it sounds like on AM. Now, of course, I had plenty of questions about whether this radio can transmit on 220, uh, 1.25 meters. The answer is yes, you can unlock it to work. So if I go to 223, 520, at the moment, if I transmit, I get a disabled button, even though I get a little marker there, it actually isn't transmitting. So to enable this, hold down the PTT and this top button, turn the radio on, and this will reveal a secret menu. So here you can see I've got 350TX on and off. So I can turn that on if I want to. So what that is indicating to me is, is everything above 350 will transmit up to 500 here. If I turn 500 on, then that means that 350 to 500 will transmit. But this one, this is the one we want, 200TX, turn that one to on. Now obviously I've turned all of these on now, so the radio should be able to transmit. I'm not gonna transmit today because in our country we don't have access to this band, so I cannot transmit 
on this frequency. That is a very good thing to note. Do not transmit with this radio outside of your frequency allocation. If you do not have access to the frequencies in your band, do not transmit on them. That is my little disclaimer, but that is how you uh, enable this radio for all band transmit. Now, the other question I received was, well, now that you've unlocked that, will it transmit down at 50 megahertz? Now, let's actually just go to a more sensible uh, six meter frequency. And if I try to transmit, it is disabled. The radio will not transmit on uh, six meters that low. Now I also detail this menu for education purposes because if for some reason you buy maybe a stack of these radios for your local club, you can go in here and you can turn off uh, the out of band transmit for these frequencies so that you can effectively lock these down so that uh, they won't transmit outside of the bands that you, that you want. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it that way, but there you go. That is how you um, unlock the radio for all band transmit. Okay, the next question is, is can the radio be powered by the USB-C without a battery attached? Now, the manual actually says not to do this, but let's see what happens. So obviously USB-C goes in the side here, five volts. I've got a little battery pack. Let's plug it into there, turn that on, and the answer is yes, you can. I noticed too that there's a little charge icon, so um, I'm not gonna trans, oh, well we can transmit I guess. VK7HH testing. There you go, it transmits. Uh, let's do an output power test and see how much output power we actually get being powered off the battery bank. Okay, we're all hooked up. Let's turn on the radio and let's transmit on 146.5 and we get 0.25 of a watt, so 250 milliwatts just using the USB-C there. So it is power limited, that's on the high setting, so do with, what, do with that what you will. I guess the other question is, is that if we plug the battery back in and we charge by USB-C, let's turn on our battery bank. and we get the full, full four and a half watts out. So that works, but uh, just with the USB-C, not quite. This radio can be programmed using a Baofeng cable, I believe, standard Baofeng program, ca program cable using the um, mic and speaker jacks here on the side. Now you can also update the firmware from Quan Chang's website. I'll put a link in the description below on how you can update the firmware for this using the same cable. Now the firmware guide is in Chinese, but what I did was I went and I translated it using Google Translate to make sense of what to do, which was relatively easy. Um, so you can do that if you want to update the firmware. Not sure what the changes are in the firmware, but uh, <laughs> update it and see what happens, I guess. So the next biggest question of course is, does this radio comply with part 97 of the FCC rules? Well, I've done and run some calculations here. I'm gonna be doing a test on my spectrum analyzer, 146.5 megahertz. That is four and a half watts or 36.5 dBm. Now the FCC part 97 rules state that all spurs must be at least 40 dB below the fundamental and below 25 microwatts, which is minus 16 dBm. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing a test on these frequencies. These are the harmonic frequencies of 146.5. So I'm going to be testing on 293, 439.5, 586, and 732.5 megahertz. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that this number here is minus 16 or greater. So um, minus 19, minus 20, that would be greater, that would be fine because this is the minimum number that we require. So let's go ahead and measure what we get. Now, I've got my radio here, it's plugged up to my spectrum analyzer. It's through 40 dB here of attenuation and I've um, zeroed that out on the spectrum analyzer already. So if we have a look here, so it's currently on 146.500. Let's do a bit of a sanity check, just having a look there. There we go, and the level there, 36.6, or pretty close to 36.5 dBm. Okay, so let's go to the first or the, sorry, rather, the second harmonic. And we read minus, about minus 12 there on the meter. So 
we have got minus 12 here. So already it fails the second harmonic in keeping under this minus 16 dBm. So we're about 4 dBm off. So let's go now to the third harmonic. 439.5 and we will transmit and I can't even read it there in the noise it's probably probably about minus 20 or so so whatever it is uh, we we can't read it so that uh, gets the tick so let's go to the fourth harmonic now same or similar result and the fifth same result again so there we go, it fails the second harmonic, but the third, fourth, and fifth are fine. Another way to measure this too is we could measure the uh, fundamental frequency uh, minus 56, 56 dB, dBm. So if the second uh, harmonic, just to double check that we've got this number correct, is not, is if it's higher than 56 dBm, below the harmonic then we're fine, uh, below the fundamental sorry then we're fine but if it's lower then we're not. So I've just done a sweep here we've got 250 megahertz span we're sitting at about 250 megs if we transmit we can see there there is the spur um, further up the band and the fundamental each division is about 10 dB so we've got there that's almost to the top so we've got 10, 20, 30, 40 not quite 50 dBm. So is this handheld right for you? Well, I answer this question in my full review of this radio right here.